All right, everyone. Welcome back. Paul Tranny here with the one and only Magdal Lopez. What's up, buddy? How you doing? What's up, man? How you doing? It's good, good to see, see you. Ya. Good to see you, too. It's cool, fantastic. Cool. We're surrounded by all your gorgeous work. You're one of the artists that I really, of course, admire. I think you do awesome work, and this is going to be a lot of fun, man. Thank your you, man. Your title says visual artist. Does that sound about right? Can you kind of describe uh, kind of like what you do or... Yeah, I mean, I do a series of posters every day. That's mostly what I do. And then I do a lot of commercial work um, that is usually doing a lot of imaging, compositing and stuff like that. So I like to call it visual, you know, visual artist because it's, it's just having fun, creating something new. You're going to see today uh, uh -huh. kind of what the process behind that is. And, yeah. you know, awesome, things is dude. fun, you know. Yeah, I hope it's fun, but I'm sure you, you do, a, you know, a poster a day. It also, some days I'm sure feel like work. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know, well, but, uh, I, I did every day for a while, and then now I do every day. So I do make mm -hmm. work every day. I just don't post it every day. Okay. That makes sense. No, that's, that's awesome. I think it's good discipline to get into, just like a cadence to where you're producing work yeah. that you love. Sure. Uh, I want to welcome everybody here, Marsha, Marissa. Steve in the house says amazing art. So just feel free to say hi in chat. Welcome Magdell. He's the man. I really appreciate him. Uh, he does have, Mia says you uh, you have uh, one of her dream jobs. Really? Which, yeah, I mean, you. when we look at this amazing art around you, like this is, a, this is a percentage of what you do, but also you said you also do client work as well, right? Which maybe be, always won't be super pretty. I, I don't know, you tell me, is that correct? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I do a lot of client work and, um, I, f I feel like as a professional, if you get into designing more and more and you create your own style and your own look, people are going to start chasing that and you're going to start getting hired to do what you want to do versus before when you get hired to do what other people want you to do. So, uh, if you put the work into it, I feel like it's, it's really nice and, to like be able to do what you want to do within other projects. It's still hard. Sometimes you have to hit some some marks within a campaign or whatever. But you know, um, at least you know you do what you what you love, and that's never that's never hard. You know. Yeah, exactly. So so that that is correct. I didn't mean to say that like sometimes the stuff you do isn't pretty because it always is. But sometimes it's very much client work that you might have mm -hmm. to do. But like you said. Uh, you just doing this poster a day, it's kind of attracted those clients to you that like your work and they say, hey, I want you to do something like that for us. That's kind of what it boils down to. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A awesome. lot of the work that I've been getting lately is like that. It's more of a, oh, we've seen you from you. We love it. We want you to make it for X campaign for uh, whatever client, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. That's very cool, man. Uh, I, I think that's awesome. Well, cool, man. What's the, uh, well, I want to welcome Jose. I see Jose in here. What's up, man? Uh, Gilbert loves your artistic style as well. Um, yeah, it's awesome. I love the colors that you use uh, and everything. So what's the, so what's, the, we could switch to your screen. Like, what's the plan today? You were showing me a sketch ahead of time. So let me just go ahead and share your screen if I could. Yeah, so a sketch this right here. You might, I don't know if you can make this bigger or not, but. Uh, uh, let me, get, uh, let me go back. It's just a super rough sketch. I don't usually sketch a lot of what I do, but uh -huh. I decided to do it today. Uh, it's okay. kind of like a book cover kind of feel slash movie poster. Uh, I was lucky enough to work on the Wonder Woman poster movie for movie poster for this for this year's Wonder Woman, 1984. Oh. It's coming out in the summer. Wow! And you know, like working on that project, it really gives you a really big. Um, wider perspective on what a movie poster means for a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, for example in the us you you can just make a very suggest just suggestive kind of like imagery that you can mm -hmm. do a lasso and and kind of like a flare on the corner and people will get okay it's wonder woman but in mm -hmm. countries like you know in asia and all of that you have to make more action-packed fire explosion kind of deal that those what people there love and enjoy more mm -hmm. so you know, having that perspective of making different things for different audiences is really good. So today I thought I would do one in, like one concept that kind of encaptures everything, you know, kind of like it has a big imagery of a guy 
-hmm. but then it has something inside of it as well so you can like detail in a little more so okay. yeah that's what we'll be doing to when to jump to the screen nice uh, yeah sounds sounds good and uh, mia does i also ask like what platform do you typically post to so i usually you know, i usually post you? on on instagram uh I have my Instagram here open. Uh, you can see uh, most of the posts that I that I do. I've been doing a lot of like text or type heavy posters. Uh, I think that's super big right now on the industry. Uh, this kind of style. Uh, I guess I'll continue with this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This this kind of style of posters uh, with big text, a lot of imagery. It's pretty busy, and I would say it doesn't work really well on Instagram because of how small Instagram is. Mm -hmm. But for sure, um, it's something to look look for when you are like shifting your style. As a designer, I, I have my own kind of like look that I've developed over the years. But I also like to uh, see what's trending, see what's new, and kind of adapt that within my my style mm -hmm. or adapt my style to it as well. So. You know, I've been doing this lately where I do a lot of like more like uh, yeah. street look or whatever, you know, you want to call it uh, with type and stuff. We're not doing anything like this today because it's basically what I do plus some type, some cool type that I make on the Illustrator. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can That's you can check out the, my Instagram. I usually post there uh, most days and when I don't post, cool. I post a story or something. So yeah, check that out. Cool. Thank you everybody Into for it. joining on the chat though. I'll be reading as much as I can and Paul's gonna be helping me out to read. I have a second monitor here. So if you see me awesome. looking to the side, that's what I'm doing. Do you know uh, Ramiro Rodriguez? Yeah, that's like, my friend. Oh, there you go. He's joining. He's like, let's go Mag D. That's what he says. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> All right, so cool. you know, I usually make um, the size that I work with is usually like 24 by 36 poster-ish size, so it could be 11 by 17. You can pick any of those sizes. Uh, it's more portrait-oriented. Um, something that I usually do as well is that I mark mine with the number that I'm working on. So it would be 544, maybe? Do you, and do, how do you save this starter file? Do you just take the previous days and duplicate I, it or? I do take the previous day and I just duplicate it and then I go from there. Uh, because what I do a lot of is that I change the, the way I'm, I'm setting up the text on that marking. You can see it here. Uh, in this case, I put it down here. Sometimes I do some text on the side, depending on how, how the poster looks and what I think is good or not. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the same way every day. I did it yeah. like this for a long time. So yeah, feel free to come up with your own way if you want to mark them. I find it's really easy to mark them if you want to sell them later on because people can just refer to the number. And also for your own sake of like keeping track of what you're doing, you mm -hmm. can go like, oh, I did this in, in 530, you know, where I did this glass thing going through a person. That's cool. And you can refer back to it. And it's, you know, really easy to do that. Yeah, it's very cool. When it comes to like having kind of, because you kind of have a template file, you could always save this just a little tip. You could save this as a PSD T, just add T to the okay. end, and that will make it, you open it up in Photoshop, but if you just tried to, you always have to do a save as, so you could never overwrite a template file. If oh, you do a okay. save, it'll say, hey, you can't save it. You need, you just do a save as. So that's so just. So I just do it here like poster template. Yeah, it'd be postertemplate.psdt and save that to your desktop. And then like you'll that. never overwrite the file. Oh, that's that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's what you need to hang out with Paul. Paul knows every trick in the book, man. No, I just... I just I'm just, so happy to I, be doing this with you today because <laughs> I'm super non-technical. I, like, I go with the feel and what it's looking like, and I feel like you know everything. So I'm super excited about that. Well, I just... All I right, just have, this, yeah. I just, just I just watch a lot of Behance here. That's all. Hey, that's great. All my stuff stolen from other people. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I have this file uh, that I put a, a few things on it. Um, the references that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using this guy. Uh, then I'm going to be using this kind of cape uh, to like put on this guy. And then inside of that, we're going to create this whole world uh, that I'm basing 
um, some of it off of this Adobe stock image down mm -hmm. here. Uh, and I'll move it so you guys can see it. And um, yeah, so let's go through that. First thing you want to do, and something that I do a lot of, is use the pen tool to cut photos. Um, I know you can do like a lot quicker selections now, like um, you can do the select object or anything like that. For this specific one, I want the look to be super, super sharp. And, and this image is not the sharpest. Uh, so what I want to do is that I want to start here with the pen tool and I'm going to show you how to how to make it super smooth, uh, even after you finish with the pen tool. Uh, this, this is going to have to this is going to have a lot of shadows and stuff on it. So you're not going to see a lot of detail, which is great. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really, probably really crisp is what you're going for. Yeah, it's going to be pretty crisp. Yeah. And this part over here is going to be a little boring because I have to like use a pen tool to cut all of these. I'll no, try to this go is, fast. Um, no, you, you, you do you. I just like watching people work and you're obviously a, a pro, with, pro with the pen tool. Yeah, because most people would stop right here. People would be like, "No, I'm not doing that." But yeah. this is a lot of the you being a pro just comes down to a lot of this work that you put into it. You know, yeah. I think. And I and I think you know also like sometimes, especially when you're doing something every day for no reason, because at this point, you know, the reason is to improve yourself, or the reason is to you know have fun making something new. Uh, when that happens. Um, you kind of don't want to do this, you know, you're like, oh man, this is so boring. Like, I don't want to go in there and cut this guy and make it look super good. And, you know, it's part of the game. It's part of what it is. It's part of the, uh, what you have to do to get a good and clean result, you know? So yeah, so going through the hair right now. And then later on, I'll probably come back and add some detail as well. But right now I'm just like, um, going pretty rough around the edges. You'll see why. Um, the whole purpose of this is to um, later on combine it with that other photo of uh, that cape. Is that the right way to say it, cape, maybe? Yeah, um, yeah, I think a cape or robe. Since it has a hood, yeah. I'd probably call it robe. Okay. So. But yeah, you're just using the regular pen tool. Um, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Using, using the regular pen tool here to like... Um, Do you ever use the... I think another tool that is kind of like underused is the uh, magnetic lasso tool. I do use that, but um, it doesn't make it super sharp. And in this yeah. case, if I was doing something else, sometimes I do, I do use that because it's like so much easier than this. Uh, and mm -hmm. if the photo is like super sharp, I'll do it as well. And if I don't care um, to like have a, like the edges kind of blurry, if I don't care to, to you know, have it that way, I would use it. But sometimes, um, yeah, it doesn't give you that super, super crisp look. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's interesting because when you use the ma magnetic lasso tool, it it looks like it's creating a vector line, but it doesn't. It ends up being just a selection. It's like in a which selection, case, yeah. Yeah, and then if you take that selection and convert it into a vector path, it might not be that clean. So yeah, so over here like down here doesn't really matter. So we're gonna like finish it up like this. Cool. And um, we can drop the guy like mask it inside of that. I think that would be the best way to do it. Cool. And you know, we have them right now. Um, on the edges, you can see still some of the color from the background. Uh, but we're gonna fix that in a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna bring now, bring in the, from this other photo, this cape uh, looking thing. Oh yeah. And we're just gonna drop it here. Um, you have a fan in Michael Akupa screamed when he saw your name because he's been a fan for years. Oh, really? So welcome, Michael. Welcome, man. Feel free to ask. This is your chance since we have him live. Feel free to ask questions in chat, uh, which is cool. It looks like you got Derek Donnelly. He's like, what's up, cuz? Hey, you know, that's you know my cousin. Derek? 
Hey, what's up, Cuz? Always killing it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> what's up, Cuz? I miss you, man. I haven't seen him in a while. Ah. Uh, Super cool. So, right. yes, great question, Marsha. Yes, the, the pen tool is more vectory. <laughs> The, the pen tool is all vector, uh, basically. Yeah, it's basically all vector. And I, you know, that's why I like it, because it gives you this super sharp finish. Mm -hmm. So you can like zoom into it and it's always going to be super sharp, which is not always the best thing. You, you can later on go in there and blur it on purpose, but initially it gives you that super sharp feel. And that's what yeah. I want for this specific one. Uh, because we're going to make him uh, like a, basically like a shadow and we're going to keep some of his highlights only around his eyes and all that. And uh, then we're going to do like a whole scene inside of his cape. So that's the whole, that's the whole purpose of doing this. Um, and then we have, you know, the cape over here. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to extract basically the bottom of it. And this is one of the things that I love about Photoshop the most. It's like, you can just be creative. It's basically like, for me, it's like painting, but easier. So you're using a lot of photos and a lot of references to, to make what you want to make. Yeah, it's very, very cool. This, this kind of uh, is like your style, sort of like photography, making photography look more graphic, at least at this point. Yeah. Is that usually what you do is like take some photography, like maybe we'll, we'll add graphics to it and we'll make it look graphic. And then mm -hmm. do you bring it to, to life with color? Is color like the last step in the process or? Yeah, color will be the last step in the process. And, you know, I, I like to do the boring stuff of first, which is, you know, kind of getting this over with this part of, um, just finishing cutting things and placing them on place and doing all of that. And once that's done, then, you know, I would um, go into the coloring part and all of that. Yeah. All right. So that's looking okay. You know, like size wise, I'm looking for size more than anything else. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said before, all of that is oh. going to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> All of that is going to disappear in a little bit. Like it's, it's all going to be super dark. So a lot of the details, like the belt, is too high, so you won't be able to see that in a little bit. And I want to make it broader, like the shoulders. That's cool. Okay. All yeah, right. I can so do it. It's placement, good. placement wise, you know. Also, like something you want to do, especially if you're posting online, or if you're working on the film group cover, um, posters, anything like that is that you want to have a good small presence. Like when you see uh, the work in a small platform like Instagram, you're usually going to see it this big. And, you know, get used to like go back and forth, back and forth and see it big, see it small. And make sure it has a good presence when it's small. Because nowadays, that's most of what people see. Is their phones, is the interactions they have with that. Uh, even in the public space, sometimes you see a poster all the way back there. And if it has a good presence, then you're attracted to it. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind um, when you do that. I'm gonna yeah. label this real quick. Yeah, and kind of what you do is you have this big, this big bold striking image, and then you kind of draw them in by all these ancillary other images that you said you're gonna add. That can you, you kind of sketched up? Is that kind of like the idea? Yeah, correct. Cool. That's the that's the main the main thing about it. It's like. You, you see something beautiful from a you know, small size, and then when you get close to it, it's even better because you see all the details inside. Uh, now I'm just making it darker. I'm going to do the same on both of them, um, keeping just a little bit of the detail. I'm using the, the curves tool for these. You could also use any of these. You can use the levels. The levels do really good at this, keeping things like super like if you want to go to extremes, like like that, you know, like if you want to keep this highlight super intense, uh, you can use the levels as well. In this case, I'm going to use the um, the curve tool, and then what I want to do is that I want to give these uh, an oil painting style, um, and I'm doing it to the cape right now, um, and that's going to make it smoother. Like, 
pixel wise it's going to be like a little bit smoother you might want to do it a couple times um and then i'm going to do a little bit more of these to where it's more stream basically i just want to see a few highlights of it instead of like getting the whole picture and then obviously the coloring on the face and the cape is different uh, so we're going to adjust that as well with use saturation. I'm going to bring it down on the face. Because right now, um, what we're trying to accomplish here is like to get only the highlights and also keep it to where we can then go back and edit if we need to. That's why I'm doing everything as a clip, clipping mask inside of a, the guy and inside of the cape. Um, I want to also go ahead and create a layer and I use the brush a lot as well to, to just paint over things. So feel free to do that as well. I'm going to use black right now and I'm going to be painting over, over this part of the cape to make it darker. Okay. I guess another way to do that, like what you could, what some people will also do is take your curves layer and paint on that mask on the curves oh, okay. mask is just like again just like another way of doing it what you're doing is actually gives you a lot of control and you actually work like me because i use those clipping masks a lot yeah you know to add highlights and to make things darker in areas mm -hmm. so good and good the call. reason why i like using clipping masks sometimes as well is because sometimes like when you get with like um a lot of people that have to approve something uh, I can create options real quick within the same flipping mask without having to like go back and, and delete or erase inside mm -hmm. of the mask itself, mm -hmm. uh, which is always useful if you if you have to achieve that kind of like going back and forth too many times. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more contrast on the cape. At this point, we're trying to make it all kind of look um, like it belongs together. Yeah, and I'm gonna apply the same effect to the guy, the, the guy's face, that mm -hmm. I did the oil paint. Uh, we might have to do it differently, and I do kind of like Ooh. that, kind of like a style of like looks kind of like painted. Uh, I'm just gonna do it a little more clean. Fascinating. I don't use oil paint very much. Can you just like show everybody where that's at again, if you don't mind? Like... Yeah, so it's filter, stylize, and then oh. oil paint. Stylize, got it. Okay, yeah, cool. filter, stylize, oil paint. This is really useful for, I'm going to show you all an example in a second. And this is something that was like kind of trendy a couple of years ago. Like everybody would get these like oil painting kind of things. Mm -hmm. You take a photo of it in real life and then you put it in the computer and apply this effect to it and it'll like make it 20 times better. Uh, hmm. The only thing with it is that you can get this kind of like weird, um, pattern uh but you can fix that yep. by doing a scale higher or lower scale uh and okay. playing with the settings over here very uh, cool yeah i think i'm gonna leave it around here for this one so i'm happy with the highlights the way they look you know something else that yeah. i want to do is that i want to add like a like a hoodie to this guy almost oh and you do so what? You do want to add a hoodie? Yeah, I do want to add a hoodie. So uh, the hoodie before, not on top of him, but like kind of like, kind of like laying down here, you know. So kind of kind of draw it here. Okay, so I do have a question from Roy asking about how how often do you find yourself falling back into the same tried and true decisions that you've made in the past as opposed to pushing yourself into new directions. Uh, very often, like everybody <laughs> else, I feel like. I mean, yeah. when you're trying to do stuff, that's what's what, that's what that's why it's good to create new things every day. Like that new style of lettering that I'm creating now. Uh, I don't. I've never done that before. Like I'm not a lettering guy. Uh, so you know, I'm happy to like come up with new things that I don't usually do. So then, when I get hired, I know how to do it. You know. And it's not the yeah. other way around. Like sometimes people want things and you're like, oh, I've never done that before. You know, if you're prepared mm -hmm. to do it uh, ahead of time, it's good. But sometimes I'm, you know, 
I'm being lazy and uh, I just do the thing, same thing I've done in the past. Um, yeah. Like everybody else, you know, it's, it's easy yeah. to, it's easy to, um, it's easy to be that way in, in anything in life. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I guess, boredom leads you to not do things the same way you've always done them. Exactly. Right? That's yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. boredom being actually a good thing. It's okay to yeah. get bored because then you like, you get to branch out and, yeah, you know, and get inspired, you know? And like do different things. Exactly. Uh, kind of want to mask this in here. I don't really care for a lot of detail around this area. Uh, yeah. What is this? Okay. And did want to do a quick uh, quick shout out. Just FYI, we're gonna have portfolio reviews. It looks like. Let me just refresh today, just so you know. Cool. So uh, check that out. Portfolio review tab. And. Uh, yeah, there we go. Well, it says portfolio review, but basically it's the Photoshop daily creative challenge that I just covered before Magdell got on, uh, talking about uh, making people and text disappear and having some fun with uh, uh, some effects. So we'll review those. Just check out the, the portfolio review tab. And we got a full day, by the way. Can I switch over to the schedule real fast while you kind of work a little bit? Yeah, go for it. Cool, real fast. Uh, just so everybody knows, we have Mangdell up for a bit. This is awesome. We have him for two hours, which is great. Uh, Julia as well, uh, doing the Daily Creative Challenge. And then we'll get into some branding and identity design this afternoon for a couple hours. Jesse Showalter doing some XD. And then you can draw along with Kyle. And then design even more and draw even more with Voodoo Val and Meredith Schomburg. So we got a full schedule. And, uh... I like yours because your project combined. Oops, sorry, wrong screen. I was playing. You, I was playing with. <laughs> the, I was play, I just switched to my screen. I was playing with the mixer brush tool, uh, which kind of uh, also kind of does like an oil paint effect. But the oil yeah. paint filter adds the highlights, which are yeah. really cool. And yeah, uh, let, yeah. Let me open a. Let me open a random image of uh, water. Um, uh, painting or something and let me see uh, I just want to show how cool this this kind of like because I, I, I saw it I saw people doing it before I knew what it was mm -hmm. and I was just so hungry to like know what it was that I, I spent so much time looking for it until I found it and I was just like man this is amazing it's so much fun to like just use this uh, yeah let's just let's just use this as an example cool uh just to that just to show uh the watercolor thing so you can go stylize oil painting and you see right away it just becomes i'm gonna max it out it becomes this kind of like oh super smooth oh yeah and I bet you've seen that online. People love to use this. Um, uh -huh. And then you can apply it multiple times to get, keep getting the same effect over and over. That's very cool. Yeah. And then, you know, you can play with the colors, all that. That would be a different poster. But <laughs> yeah, let's, come back to, let's come back to that. I all right. Like so, it. you know, we have these, um, these pretty, pretty much where we want it as far as the initial image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do um, a background on these. And for the background, I sometimes what I do is that I um, I just pick random colors and apply them. Uh, for these, maybe I want to do like an afternoon kind of setting, maybe. I don't know. Let's just drop some colors in there and see what happens. Uh, feel free to like, you can do it with, with, uh, you can just create a new gradient and do it through the gradients, which is great. Right now, the gradients are super cool in Photoshop. There's a bunch of new gradients that you can use, or you can just do it with a brush, like the way I'm doing it. Um, either way it's fun, you know? Yeah. And you're just using, using the gradient tool. No, right now I'm just using 
the brush tool. Oh, just the brush. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and I'm picking I'm picking each color. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that I have a little more control over it. Yeah. Yeah, I like even using the gradient tool because you're actually working on the canvas in the document as opposed to, um, you know, a separate dialogue that you're adjusting. Because what we did add, at least for patterns, is the ability to, you know, to rotate patterns. You can rotate gradients. This is easier to do it on the canvas like you're doing. That looks cool. Yeah. And then, you know, I want to add like a white one at the end to make it look more like an afternoon kind of deal. More like a flare, you know? We got it around the edges. Uh, Paranti, just so you know, the schedule's right below us. So you can always kind of check out what's next. It's the Adobe Live schedule. But this one's worth a rewatch. I'm glad we have you tomorrow as well for two hours. What is the plan tomorrow? Are you gonna, we'll see how far we get here and then are you gonna tackle something new or continue this? I guess we'll see, or what do you think? Yeah, I guess we'll see. I think I think we'll probably finish this today and then we'll make a new one tomorrow. Uh, and you feel free during the day today to like drop recommendations or like, oh, what did you do this or that, you know, for tomorrow? And I'll see what we can do. Cool. All right. So I'm going to start working inside of him now, inside of uh, the image that's going inside. So um, what I want to do is that I want to combine these two things into one group and you know what a guy or whatever and let's label these background this is a problem when you work on a pc and a mac at the same time yeah like, I, always, I always get the command and the control oh tell me about it yeah and you you're um, obviously working on a pc now but you have like a mac laptop too or i have a mac laptop that i use when i go out like when i i'm outside of my house and then i have these at my house um that i that i use for you know bigger projects or whatever okay so i i love these i'm happy with this um i download a few images that we can use um to like start adding stuff inside this is one of them um and we can start by just placing this inside of a clip mask it to him. Oh yeah. Uh, we could do uh, one of these um, blending modes, but I don't know how how good it'll look. So I might use some of the blending modes and then use as well a like the brush to like delete some parts of it. I kind of do like this, maybe a little lighter. Uh, or maybe Cody what we Bear. do so we use the other one. I like it. Cody Bear likes the Gal Galaxy image. She approves. Hard it light moves. looks good. You're getting plenty of suggestions in chat too, <laughs> which is nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably do this and then uh one thing that you could do also when you're when you're doing this if you wanted to show a little more or less just do some curves on it yeah you know yeah that always helps into it and uh regardless of where you get your images just make sure you're of course paying for them you know whether you get them from adobe stock or wherever actually i think uh nasa has some if you want space images yeah. NASA's site is a good place to go. You can get some cool nebulas and galaxies for free, just FYI. These are from Adobe Stock. Cool. And some of them from Adobe Stock and like two of them from Getty Images. But yeah, yeah. you can find as them for free online. As long as, as long as you're paying for them, because otherwise you're kind of stealing from another artist and that's yeah. not right. <laughs> you know, legit. like just because it's online doesn't mean it's free. <laughs> yeah, legit. All right. So yeah, so, you know, I'm going to erase a little bit here and there. And then um, I think I like that. I think that's cool. Um, something that I want to do is that I want to do this like epic scene down here with a guy running. And I came across this image while I was looking on Adobe Stock. Um, I'll show it to you guys. It's like this guy running away from this dragon. Oh, and that's I awesome. I especially loved like the guy and the pusher of it. I think it's mm. like epic. So let's go ahead and cut this guy out uh, from the background. 
using again the pen tool because this is a, because yeah. this, is, this is a drawing it's a little rougher so uh in this case you really do want to make it um sharp you know and then we'll use the same oil painting thing to make it smoother it's not going to look super realistic but inside of the guy and we'll make him a smaller it'll look close enough yeah into it and it'll like since you're using the pen tool it's going to match the current style that you're you're working with yeah that's mainly Cause... why i kind of use that style as well because it'll bring it all together mm -hmm. and it'll make it look super super clean very cool um another way if people are looking for shortcuts there's also like of course uh adobe capture you could literally use adobe capture and point it at your monitor if you have a an image on your screen that's just like another way to like vectorize an image is using adobe capture and point it at your at your laptop or wherever uh but you know results may vary it all it depends on the on the image that you're working with yeah so. this image looks pretty bc even for the I Can, feel like. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm so, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just gonna. Uh, Ryan is asking, can we do multiple clip baskets with different images? Oh, clip baskets is a new term. I've never heard of it. <laughs> but please yeah. kind of clarify. You can have multiple clip, uh, clipping masks. Um, you could like what you did actually even below in your layers panel. I can see you can have multiple layers. Um. Yeah, that's probably what's going on. You could have multiple vector layers in a folder or in a layer group, and then have a clip mask on top of it. And that image is being is showing through your vector shapes in the folder, just like you did with the galaxy image. So maybe that's what you mean. But yeah, into it. Yeah, maybe he means like the groups, you know, like we have, yeah. we have a group that has clipping mm -hmm. mask on it. And then we made a group out of that, and now we're doing new clipping masks on it. Yeah, and if you did want to do this in parts, you could do it on different layers with, with different uh, shapes, shape layers. And then you could select those two shape layers and then merge them together just by right-clicking on the two layers. And they'll make them part of one uh, shape layer, just FYI. Yeah, so that's another, I like it. You can use, uh, can we get a new feature called the clip baskets just because? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> clip baskets. <laughs> so I like it. I think we should have just gone along with clip baskets, like acting like everybody yeah, knows what it is. Like, oh, yeah, the clip basket. Yeah, you can <laughs> oh, have yeah, multiple. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you can have multiple clip baskets. Why not? Yeah, just put, it, just put it in the clip basket. It'll be fine. Just put it in the basket. <laughs> I'm going to just start using that with other designers and they're going to be like, what? Yeah, just put it in the basket, man. Just, just put it in the clip basket. And in this case, if you ever wanted to see the image, you know you can go over to the fill. You know about yeah. this. Or the yeah. opacity. Either uh, one. Opacity, yeah. Some people don't know what the difference between opacity and fill is. Fill is going to be the opacity of the layer color, obviously, of the fill color. But anyway. Yeah, I just, I just usually start with it. <gasps> Oops. I just usually start with it that way. And then when I get to a point where it's covering it, I do uh -huh. it. Uh-huh. And you know. did you know you could just hit, say, 5 on the keyboard and it'll make it 50% or 0 on the keyboard. It'll give it 0% opacity. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's just... a great shortcut right there. Just making stuff up. All right. We're almost done. I promise. No, it's very soothing. You're moving fast. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Like, I don't um, want people to fall asleep. <laughs> You're doing great. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, and if you notice here, I'm not going completely inside or being super loyal to the to the drawing itself. So it doesn't really matter. Like, people don't have a context of what this looks like, anyways. So, mm -hmm. you know, feel free to make it look whatever you want to make it look like. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. So yes, you could you could you could select you would use a thousand other tools in Photoshop to select this as well. Yeah. Magdale, of course, wants it to have that smooth style, that crisp style like it does with the rest of the image. That looks awesome. Already. It looks cool. Cool. So uh let's move this guy down. 
you know what this is why sometimes i don't like i'll keep it around just in case <laughs> but uh yeah there it is okay um so we're gonna have this guy running down here we're gonna be making him a lot smaller than he is around that big it's cool looks looks good to me uh oleg Looking basically cool. just answer oleg uh megdell's just that fast when it comes to using the pen tool you were doing a click and drag to some degree to add the curve to the pen, to the actual um bezier mm -hmm. point of course uh but a lot of that just comes down to uh just working hard on it just practice, yeah, it's like doing a lot of hours doing it. Um, yeah, so what I want to do here is that I want to create like kind of like, like a skyline kind of deal. Um, so I'm just going to use this. Uh, it's something I, I've been doing lately. I've been using this uh, lasso tool because it's really faithful to your move, the movement of your hand. Mm -hmm. And I'll just do a random selection up here and create a new layer. And I'm going to kind of duplicate this gradient that I made down here in there. Um, so we'll start with white a little bit. Sweet. Or the other way around, let's start with blue. I'm going to color pick this blue up here. So let's color pick this bad boy. going to be more intense towards the metal. Big white. Wow, oh, love it. Yeah, and that kind of gives you like a, you know. Mm-hmm. Why am I selecting that one under? There it is, okay. Oops. It's very mm. cool. I'm gonna have to lock that, okay. For some reason, okay, here it is. All right, so uh, I also want to make these oil paint, but I want to darken it first. So I'll do the same thing, I'll do the curves, and I'll make it dark like this. Uh, change the color to make it kind of belong in this world. That's more like bluish and purplish. Take a little saturation away. Now let's make them a lot darker, actually. Yeah, kind of like that. And then let's do the oil paint effect. Let me lighten a little bit underneath them so that we can see it and I'll do the same I'll do like a something down here just a little bit just to see them mm -hmm. very cool uh, Loa can asks a tough question because if you have a disability and can't use certain shortcuts and need to press multiple keys that's that is a tough one we know in in Photoshop you don't need to use the shortcut keys Obviously, there's some that will constrain images and things. Um, yeah, that is a t that's a tough one. Um, I, I think on the iPad, we have Photoshop on the iPad, and that allows you to use, like, Apple Pencil. Um, and, you know, ne not necessarily with a keyboard at all. But, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. That's looking cool, good. So We'll make this um, this color. Maybe like a reflection or something. I like it. It's very much like sci-fi, kind of gives me Star Wars vibes, mm -hmm. you know, um, stuff like that. Um, yeah, almost like a, like a Star Wars poster kind of deal, right? It like mm -hmm. gives you that kind of look. I want to make like a horizon right there. 
and you know uh, might be too close to the mountains I'm gonna have to probably move those up And then I, I have a suggestion for you how to tweak Photoshop that you may like or may not like. Say that again. Sorry. I, I have a I have a suggestion like that might help working in Photoshop in your layers panel. Cause see how all your little layer thumbnails are the size of the document? Mm-hmm. You could change it so it's just the element that that is on that layer. Super easy. You want to you want to see it? Yeah. Because I don't. Do I have it. no idea what layer thirty four is. But do the flyout menu for layers. Go to the flyout menu, which is the three lines on the right side up at the top. Okay. There you go. Go down to panel options. Okay. And then go to layer bounds under thumbnail content. And now it will just show what is on that layer in the thumbnail. Oh, see what it, that's epic. So now we can actually see that guy, which is good, even yeah. though before he was just... I don't, know if, I don't know if you like that or not. If you don't, that's okay. I like it. I like it. I love it. Sweet. I think it's great. Yeah. Another thing I turn off is I don't add copy to layers that I duplicate, because <laughs> that's another setting. And uh, okay. I actually condense all layer styles when they're created. So you can actually change it so it doesn't do it? Yeah, that's also in the just the okay. panel, panel options. It's kind of fun. Yeah, we'll change we'll change it now in a second so that so that so I don't go crazy here. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to do like a water kind of deal down here. So uh, I'm just gonna create a like a white background underneath this this is going to be the water the white's going to be the water and i have uh in this layer another photo if it loads there it is i have this photo right here and i'm just using this photo as a reference uh that's why i didn't download it because i really like how how the water looks on this one how you can see through the water a little bit so i want to use that as a reference and what I'll do is that I use it as a guide to paint it basically on it. And I even love how this mug looks down here towards the back. So same thing, I'm gonna start adding um, basically a layer up here that is going to be all of these black rocks. And I'm gonna do it with this tool. This is so much easier and faster. You don't have to sit here with me using the pen tool for a long time. Does that make sense? Yeah, we, uh, we're okay with you using the pen tool, by the way. I, I'm just amazed that I've actually been using the lasso tool a lot. And really? I use the same way you do. Like I just use my mouse. Okay. And I, f I feel like I'm like pretty accurate with the, just the yeah. lasso tool. It's just, you know, and it's so such an easy and quick way to like, make it like cool, you know, and, and fast. I do, I do wish there was an option for smoothing. So you could actually yeah. make it very, it's, it's actually accurate. It's like an illustrator with the pencil, you have accurate and you can change it to smooth. So once you create your line, it'll kind of smooth it out. Yeah. Uh, would be nice. That's what I'd like to see with the lasso tool, but. Uh, Oops. That'd be really cool. That would take, good. sometimes you get confused with certain things. And the only way to fix it is to like subtract, you know? Mm hmm. Exactly. Welcome, Victor. If you're just joining us, love to say hi to you. And uh, so you can uh, participate, by the way, like Cody says, uh, we'll be doing the daily creative challenge, reviewing those designs here in about 40 minutes. Uh, 10.30? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that how much time I have left to finish this, Paul? No. Uh, well, yes, you definitely have 40 minutes of solid time to work. So we'll go to... 
11 a.m. It's 12 a.m. my time. <laughs> 1 p.m. your time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is it almost, it's like, it'll be... It's, it's 12 20 right now. Okay, cool. 12 20. So 1 p.m. Uh, Central Time, we'll be reviewing uh, the designs. But it's not going to take us 30 minutes, so you can always jump back into your design probably the last 15 minutes and, and do cool. some work. For sure. And I love how you're using a photo reference because too many people, like, just don't. Like, I'm like, man, learn from life. Like, you know, yeah. do exactly what you're doing. You know, maybe get inspired, like... Use those yeah. photo references because things and will get wonky if you're not using a photo reference. And it's done right here. It's ready for you to use, you know, like I say, perfect. Oh, there Look you at go. that. Like I finished Damn. that. Ah, oh, it's cool. It fits in, in there pretty well. It's not perfect. Like he, now, is that going to be water? Is that what you said? The other way around. The black is the rocks and then the white is going to be the water. So we'll do some reflections oh. on it. Ah, oh, fun. Yeah. Let me lock this because apparently... Um, every time I click on it, it clicks on the bottom layer for some reason. Do you so, have any any tricks for that, Paul? And when you when you're doing what? Like when I'm I'm using the the direct selection tool. Is that what it's called? Uh huh. The yeah, when you that you click the auto select. So when I click on the layer, it selects it by itself. But you yeah. see, it's going all the way to my background. Oh. Although, although I'm up here, you know. Um, may yeah, no, you have all your settings correct. Yeah, maybe because I would I make make sure you have it set to to layer because that's what you're trying to select a layer, not a group. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I locked some layers in here. Maybe that's it. What well, could work in like this? You can um, toggle. You can toggle the auto select on and off by hitting the command key. Oh, okay. Too, in case yeah, that helps. Oh, that's cool. Because that's what I do is I, I always have it unchecked and then I hold down the command and then I click on the object and I'll jump to that layer. That's cool. But that looks good. All right. So we have this going on right here. It looks pretty good. Um, I do want to um, maybe make it look more like it belongs, obviously. So we're going to start by colorizing a little bit the this rock texture thingy uh, with colors that are like pretty much black but they have a hint of like red and blue you know and towards the end of the screen it's going to be more dark so yeah i think that works um Something that we're going to need to do is to do um, these mountains and the background stars. And duplicate both of them. I'm going to go ahead and combine them into one. Flip them and drop them here in the water within this layer maybe here it is okay uh i forgot a layer right to put in there i do need what? also this blue layer here it is hmm. ah is this it? is looking so sweet. Yeah, it's just a lot of like little details. Uh, I love it. To fix. Um, I don't know why it's not showing down here. What are you? Uh, oh, okay. I know where it is. Sorry. Good. There it is. Okay. Perfect. Cool. I'm just trying to make a mirror image with both of these. Then make it more like whitish. Extend it a little bit out. And you're stretching the mountains. 
I'm stretching the mountains and the and the sky as well. Um, and then I'll probably do. Um, Probably do some white strokes on top of it to make it look more like water. Oh yeah, some nice like ripples. That'd be yeah, cool. Especially towards the end, you see. And then uh don't forget to do the reflection of the guy. Yeah, yeah. I just wanna make sure I finish him first. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I got him to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm happy with the way he looks. And then I'll do that. Yeah, I think people sometimes mess up the difference between a shadow of a person and the reflection of a person. Because mm -hmm. it's not it's not the same angle. Just so you know, like the shadow is going to lay flat on the ground. The reflection is going to be a mirror, like a flip vertical. Yeah, like a straight up mirror. Yeah. Yeah, these these floor thing needs to be a little bit darker since the guy's pretty dark himself i would love to like even having the strong like i don't know does he need stronger highlights i don't know i just think the guy looks, don't 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 listen to me you're the expert yeah you, you I, do what I you just, do <laughs> i think i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh cheat a little bit and do uh do like a, something like this behind oh, me. okay nice. which is always useful like when you're doing like action looking things that like you do something like this you know mm -hmm. separates you, them from the background kind of highlights separates into the background then you add some smoke or something and it's stop just, making it look so cool it makes, keeps getting <laughs> like cooler and cooler that's the idea right to like uh, like slowly make it look nice uh, this already looked really good it keeps getting better and better so i'm into it um i did want to ask you a question though not me but savannah would do you do you start up uh, this one you started up with a sketch but do you usually start with like a sketch or an idea or do you just jump into photoshop like i usually they... i usually just jump into photoshop um what i do a lot of is like that i, I look a lot of uh, references like all day i'm consuming a lot of like design and then when i'm jumping to it i already have a mental idea of like oh i saw this today and i really liked it i want to kind of like duplicate or replicate or take inspiration from that and make my own thing which is also a good you know like like something to like be careful about it's like people usually like when they reference something they just straight up copy it mm -hmm. instead of like being more like okay i like the way this looks i'm gonna make it my own how do i make it my own you know you take little pieces from a lot of mm -hmm. different things and at the end it looks like completely different you know I think that's the right way to like reference or copy work. It's like making mm -hmm. your own through, yeah. you know. For sure. And I think even if you go out, to, like I encourage people, yeah, take something, like copy it if that helps you learn how to do X. But mm -hmm. you'll also, in copying it, you'll realize that you're kind of, you'll, you're going to end up kind of making it your own anyways. Like yeah. it's hard to take yourself out of the art that you're producing. Mm -hmm, you that's know, true. so I don't know. There's like a side of it because I could see people taking a look at your work and doing the, just l straight up doing this. I'd encourage people to do exactly what you did, and then of course, you know, honoring you as the 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 person who created this, and you're just doing a version of it. But that's a good practice. But it's hard to, you know, I think it's hard to remove yourself from from anything yeah. that you do. Totally, for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm considering the idea of like kind of like you know what i feel like right now have you ever seen those guys that, that do this the spray paint thing in the street and they just like do a whole thing and then just start spraying like like a little bit on top of it and then they rinse it all out and it's something completely different that's what i feel like right now like making these circles i'm like i don't really know what i'm doing i'm just doing it because <laughs> I, I feel like it's going to look cool yeah and again that's why we have these i don't I want you to kind of just play, get yourself into a jam, work yourself out of that jam or whatever. That's what happens yeah. to me. Like I throw too much at it and then I start, I start editing, start subtracting. Um, but yeah. I definitely it. think it looks cool. Uh, 
it'll be cool if he's actually escaping something, you know, like if something's going on back here that was making him run away from it. It's right now it doesn't look mm -hmm. like doesn't look like I mean it looks like he's afraid, but Yeah. We don't know we don't know what he's afraid of. It doesn't what have is... to it doesn't have to be of anything, you know. Uh, in my initial sketch I had a you know, like a clock or something behind it, which is mm -hmm. oh, I'll do let's see if I you can see it there. At all. Yeah, let me make this a little larger. Keep it there. Can you that see helps that? a little is bit. It, is it too bright? That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, like a, like a clock or something here behind the guy. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I've been into watches lately. That's probably why. But uh, <laughs> um, I'll yeah. leave this part down here as it is for now, and I'll move on to Ooh. do... Another idea, just since we're thinking of ideas, you could have something kind of coming out from that horizon. Mm -hmm. Like it's a swoosh that's coming out and then it breaks the border of the guy. Like it's like missiles or something, some projectiles coming out and it could break the frame. I'm I just like throwing. that. Or uh, something that's really small back there. It has like a trail and it's like getting mm -hmm. bigger. I don't know what fire i do like I the idea of ideas. like maybe like an explosion here in the center and something okay. going up like a rocket or something you know yeah that'd be cool too we'll, we'll revisit that uh i do want to make a couple detailed stuff how much time do we, we have an hour right uh we have an hour about 30 minutes thank you so much cody bear reminding us that we do have just the we'll review the challenge submissions in 30 minutes Ooh, mallory what's the title of the movie if this is a movie, is it a movie? It's kind of movie-ish. It's kind of movie-ish, yeah. So feel free to drop some titles on there. Yeah, uh, do it. We'll name it whatever. Whatever everybody wants. Yeah, into it. Okay, so I'm just dropping some small details stuff around him. It is. It's it's totally a movie. Everybody agrees. Your movie star. <laughs> I almost want to, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Feel free to give us some movie titles for this. Maybe we can drop, I also downloaded these two images that I really like. One is this diamond texture. Um, Oh, wow. I That's got cool. this from also Toby Stock. And I was thinking it might be cool to like maybe add it somewhere in here. America's Last Days. Maybe not. Fire Runner. The Man. Solar Rise. The Time Runner Chronicles. The Clipper ba title is the Clipper Basket. The Clipper Basket Weaver. <laughs> I don't know. Not okay with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Like the Time Runner. That sounds pretty cool. I think it should be like the Temp. He looks very Knights Templar, which I like that as a phrase. Yeah. The last Templar. I don't know. That's something. Um. No, this is destroying everything we've done. Mm. Yeah. I like some of that, just the blend modes, you know. I like the va the slight variation it gives it, which is nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. The Last Eclipse. Megadeth. Jeez. Ooh, Steve has the best one. Late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so that's good stuff. It's plain and simple, late for dinner. Sometimes you just gotta, you know. Late for dinner. Feet don't fail me now. Now I'm using this in a completely different way that I was going to use it uh, initially. 
Do you ever use uh, color lookup tables or do some overall like color moves once you're done with it? Yeah, do I do it at the end. Okay. Like at the end of everything I do, um, uh, like, a, like a color correction thing where I drop uh, color balance and I, you know, mess with it a little bit. And I'm planning on doing this on this one towards the end. Uh, once all the components are done, it's easier to just drop it in there and do that. Um, I think I'm going to get rid of this diamond stuff. It's not working out. Finally, I just I just wanted you to just try something that it makes me feel better when you try something and it didn't work out because that's most of my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, it I makes mean, that's, me feel better. <laughs> I feel like that's most of everybody's life that <laughs> does design, you know, it's like, uh -huh. so oh, I try to make this and it didn't work out. I feel like but, it was like the only time you learn is when yeah, you said, like, welcome to the club, man. Yeah, it's like, welcome oh, that didn't work out. You learned something. Yeah. I'm trying to make these cubes here. Um, oh, they, somebody was doing a, a riff on your name when they said Megadeth. So Magdal, Meg, Mega, Megadeth. <laughs> Crystal River, Mysticism Eclipse. People are creative, man. Oh, yeah, Dream Runner. Will, Will Bridges, welcome, Will. Uh, yeah, we're into uh, that whole idea of having like a mushroom cloud thing in the background. Sure. For super like last day on earth. Uh, yeah. Today, huh? So morbid. I, I think he's running, running toward a big banquet party with his friends. <laughs> he's not running away from anything. Let's put a positive spin on it. I'm, go I'm gonna, but I'm late for the party. So that voice that instead voice of like so much better <laughs> instead of like oh the last day on earth no it's like it's party time i'm late and i'm the i'm the man of the hour i love it it's giving it a, so, giving it a, a different light uh, square up here all right that's gonna work Pizza time. Cody Bear, let's do that. Pizza time. Pizza time. Cool. Uh, I like this. And what I want to do with these little squares is that I want to um, have some texture inside of them. Uh, that's why I downloaded this texture right here. I also got it from Adobe Stock. So, you know. Are we going to put it inside of the... Inside of each face of the squares, yeah. Okay, cool. I think I probably should have made it a smart object and then... So that I don't have to do it again, you know? With this, but no. The cool thing is that I don't, I don't really have to, though. I can just drop it inside of them like this. You know, as long as the perspective. Mm -hmm. As long as the perspective works. Mm -hmm. Which is going to in a second. There it is. That's a shortcut key you just held down that I, th I think maybe people don't know about. To modify when you do a transform. Uh huh. Right? Because you hold down the command key. I'm not sure what it is on a PC. I'm holding uh, when I, uh, right now when I'm doing it, I'll see it because I, I often forget. It's, it's control. Yeah. On the control. PC's control, it's command on the Mac, right? Yeah. Yep. And then you can move the edges like like that, so that it looks like you know. Then obviously you can um, you can always go in here and just add a highlight, you know. Yeah. So there you go. That makes it so much better. Disco Ball Chronicles. And a shot on this one. Yeah, man, I really want... I think you would really... Because you use Cinema 4D, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's that's pretty cool. I think for the rest of us is like Adobe Dimension. 
because it's yeah, nice being I, able I do to... want to get into Adobe Dimension more because I'm not an expert on on cinema at all. Like I'm like barely starting and mm-hmm. I mean, I know a couple of things, but it's super basic. I wouldn't consider myself good at it at all. So I do want to use Dimension because it's more inside the Adobe world, which I understand a lot more. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it'll be more of my speed, you know? Yeah, and it, it just enables you to create little elements that have fun textures that you could render out and drop in to this experience. So, do you yeah, think it will be faster than what I'm doing? Uh, I think the re- like for you in general, the results will be pretty appealing because you would have okay. fun playing with uh, light and textures and reflections and stuff of like basic elements. Cool. Maybe you can give me a little tutorial later. On. For sure. In fact, I, I might might set, set something up since you're kind of doing that. I'll do the dimension version of it. Oh, yeah. That'd be super interesting to see. Right now, I'm just picking random spots here to add inside of these faces uh, of of these little squares. And with this, like once you see one, you're like, oh, okay, I've seen, I've seen them all, but. Cool, and then this will go here. Sweet. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Sorry, we were qu- I was quiet there for a little bit. This is looking awesome. I'll show you some. Actually, I'll show some dimension stuff, Rolf. I'm rendering something out right now, um, and I'll show it to you guys. Uh, but uh, to answer Loic's question, uh, Magdell's been working for about about an hour and twelve minutes. Okay, is that right? Yeah, about an hour and twelve minutes. We said, "Hey, get to work and entertain us." That's what we demanded from him. And that's what he's been doing. Uh, but in about 15 minutes, we'll do uh, what says portfolio reviews, but essentially uh, the design challenge reviews will happen. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for that. This will be good. And yeah, I'm just happy you're here. Got my f- one of my very favorite artists on the stream. Thank you, Paul. So awesome. Just moved into a new place, broadcasting from good old outside of Dallas, basically Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Right? Loving your office. I think your office looks is coming together nicely, by the way. Thank you. It's looking, I love the lights back there. A little, it's like a little red, Thank a little you. blue. I had to throw a bunch of lights from, uh, back there to to make it look a little better for the stream, you know? <laughs> no, we appreciate to it. Hide, to hide some of, the, some of the bad. So you do lights. It does look. All right, I'm almost done with these squares. Cool. I'm sorry, everybody. I want to get a cool water texture. Yeah, no, this is good. not fun. Maybe you can show us what you're doing, Paul, because I've been doing the same thing for a while. All right, you got it, my friend. I will. Uh, yeah, let's just start from scratch. This is going to be um, this should be a lot of fun. So I'll just switch screens. There we are. Okay. Uh, so just uh, kind of kicking off with dimension, since Megdale's working on some sphere or uh, some cubes and stuff, I'll go create new. Right. Oh wait. Here's my new um, document, basically. And off to the side, we have our starter assets. Right. So this is typically where I'll jump from. These are brand new. These basic shapes that we can actually control the properties of. There's also text in here, but I'll just start with a cube, drop it in here, right? There it is. It's gonna render out, right? Because I have that turned on, Uh, but I can then kind of manipulate and move it around and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'll jump into the backgrounds. Let's add a fun background. In fact, we can go into libraries. So if we were sharing assets, um, but what I wanna do is I actually want to Hello, I have so much stuff in here. 
graphics. There we go. I'm gonna find a cool, ooh, that's nice. So anyways, I'm just gonna grab an image. I have this 3D abstract neon that I can kind of put in the background. I want this to interact differently, so I'm gonna change the material. So right up here, I'm gonna grab a different material. Let's grab some glass and drop it on there, right? And now we can kind of like move it around. We don't really see anything till we press this button right up here. Show or hide the render preview. We start to get more of an idea of what's happening. Uh, since this is a cube, I can give it a bevel right over here. And again, this is new stuff. Give it a, sw a slight bevel. Ooh, that's getting interesting. But now it's just creating this fun, like reflective um, element. And then from there, I would just probably like render this out. But the cool thing about rendering this out, so what I was gonna do is I was gonna take the same texture MagDL has, put that in the background, make sure it gets reflected. I would change, watch it change when I add like a three point light system, it'll start to really brighten it up because we have a key, a fill and a backlight that we can now control as well, right? Um, if you wanna get fancy, I could easily see MagDL using something like this these studio color stage light, these two right here. So if I add these, let's watch it change. It gets like a little bit more disco ball-y because it's reflecting these fun neon lights right in here, right? So that's what I would do, create this uh, crazy cube. We'll go to render, we'll just render that out. And uh, we would see that as a PSD that I can give to Magdell and he can go ahead and steal and all that fun stuff. So anyways, that's what I would do if I were you, just like create some, maybe some cool fun elements. I do lots with skulls. So I'll have skulls in here with like metallic and just different textures on them. Makes it look a lot of fun, like a lot of fun. And uh, that's, that's kind of the short of it. So there's your crash course. Uh, did you just save your file, Magdell? Did you just save it? No, uh, I think I did. Okay, or I'm just making sure that you did because it's looking cool. I just switched back to your screen, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're back. So I finished the little squares. Oh, yeah. Little Nothing squares. Nothing much happened here. I just finished the squares. And um, what else? Let me make this bigger. I think I made it smaller by accident. And I do a steel hold sometimes, the Oops. The um, shift. It's an all Photoshop user. Does anybody else still do that? What do you when you what are you doing? What was it? When I'm when I'm making things uh, small and big, I press shift often. Still. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like to constrain it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I want to add some um, numbers here uh, to the. Those things, so that would be maybe 10 or something like that. How do you do 10 on Roman numerals? It's an X, right? Yeah. Just one X. I'll do that on maybe Gotham, one of my favorite fonts. Do I have Gotham, just normal Gotham? Is that one of your go-tos, Gotham? I like Gotham because it doesn't show any character really, you know, it's just, you know, straight up. Mm -hmm. Super simple. Yeah. Maybe we can use something like an older style for this, kind of like this, maybe. Yeah, like a serif? Yeah. Want to yeah. welcome uh, Julia. Welcome. Discovered a new perk from working from home, which is streaming Adobe Live. So we want to welcome you and just like, hang out with us. We're here all, like all the time. We'll show the schedule in a second. Or in a little bit. But yeah, I like that X. It does kind of need a title. Like, yeah, that's... I mean, text is always a fun element to add. Mm -hmm. um, just those, you know, shapes. But This stuff is all... It all needs to be aligned. Uh, looks like this uh, 3D object has done rendering. So I'll switch to my screen really fast while you tweak that. Yeah, go for here's, it. Here's the, uh, actually, let me go back. Here's dimension. 
So it rendered it out. I could do cloud rendering as well. So it'll render in the cloud so it doesn't make my machine's fan turn on, which I, sorry about that, everybody. Edit in Photoshop, here it is. Here's uh, my rendered element like so. So you could drop this in anywhere. I get it, it's not transparent, um, but you can make it transparent. In fact, you have these additional layers, which has the uh, this uh, layer that allows you to select the material or the object. There's really only one material and one object here, so this isn't that fancy. But then you have this depth information, which can also be used. But in general, here it is. If you don't like this shadow, so you can get really, yeah, create some crazy stuff. You'd always turn that off in dimension as well. So that's probably what I would do in this situation, is go to the environment right down here, and I would just turn off the ground plane so there doesn't, doesn't cast any shadows, um, you know and then manipulate it accordingly. So that's all. That's all I got for that's all I got for you guys. How we doing, bud? Ooh, I like it. Oh, I'm switching back and wow. Interesting. You have a you have a circle. <laughs> I know. Right. We, we have a circle. We have a circle. <laughs> All right, so I was. You just, know, I was just, you're not nearly as excited as I was about a circle. I was like, you have a circle. And we have a circle. Yeah, I just wanted to do, do it a little more subtle, you know, Ugh. where it's more like, kind of like that, and maybe a different color. Yeah. There you go, just messing with it a little bit. Um, but it maybe smaller. Cool. I do need to take a full, full class on that um, 3D stuff ball. No, you're good. I, you know, if you spent a half an hour with it, you would, you would get it. So, uh, with dimension. So no, no sweat. Uh, I'm going to add some mountains down here, back here. Well, you're only going to be able to see these, uh, through the back. Kind of like that. Like some kind of negative mountains. Just to give the background a little bit more. To work with. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, noise to the background. Just a tiny bit. So uh, I'll combine this back here. Do noise. So that gives it a really cool kind of feel, you know. I'm gonna do the same with the guy, same amount, and the same with uh, some of this stuff, some of these layers. I'll do it with uh, probably do less here because it's smaller. There you go. And you're just adding that directly to what? What are you? Were you adding that noise? Where I'm adding yeah. it to each layer. Uh, okay. 
I can make it a smart object and then add it as a. Yeah, either. Which is probably the right way to do it, though. No, there's no, is there a right way? It's like you do awesome work and your clients are happy, so congratulations, you did it the right way. <laughs> what you could do is you could always put a gray layer on top of everything and then add the noise to a you know like a layer on top. And do but it that's like a mode. Yeah, something like that. But that's you know, you would might lose some of the Christmas of those lines. Yeah. That's, yeah. Open to suggestions. Title suggestion, Time Shifter. All right, sounds good. Yeah, if you're doing this for print, how bad would the colors shift from when going to see a Moike? Uh, I don't believe in this one too bad because over here, I'm paying, kind of paying attention to the alarm thing. So this color would translate well. If you get up here and you get this warning, uh, you can see how, you know, that's a problem. But if you go down, if the warning disappears, you're basically good. So that's a good rule to like, kind of work both uh, RGB and CMYK at the same time. Very yeah, you cool. see, warning you're, is bad. Then you bring it down a little bit and do an in-between. But if you're working only for online, there's nothing wrong with doing this, you know, like do mm -hmm. you do you. Do you. You do you into yeah. it. Probably gonna duplicate this bad boy. And um, maybe kind of want to give it a um, a different effect. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. You continue to work. I'm gonna go ahead and move my, my laptop's a little loud, the fan is. So give me one second. You're gonna be on you're gonna be the only one on screen, okay? Go you're for carrying it. the show, so mm -hmm. give me one second, and then in three minutes we'll get into the uh, challenge submissions as well. Cool. So three minutes away. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, yeah, so I'm I'm just trying to give these a little bit more uh, of that cool style. So maybe I'll try to do um, a blur effect. Zoom, maybe. Let's try to see what this looks like. Might not do a lot, yeah, because there's not a lot of like highlights on it. Um, the other thing we can do is that we can keep it like that and use this much tool to drag it which is either gonna break your computer or or not. We'll see. Yeah, it's, it's taking forever to to load. So we'll, we'll leave this effect alone for now. We don't Wh we don't want to break. <laughs> which effect were you trying to load? No, I was, I was I was doing this mush tool on this blur on this blurry background, so Ah. Yeah. What you could tr like also the um Tilt shift blur could do something as well. There's also that. Which one? Uh, tilt shift blur. So it will like give you a line and you're like everything. Have it gradually get more blurry the further away from the line it gets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I agree. When you use the smudge tool, it's uh, pretty intense. Yeah. On your. Computer. You can get pretty intense. Uh, how do you guys feel about these lines? Do you like them? Uh, I'm not. I personally do. I mean, I, I like that you put them at an angle. Yeah, um, it's giving it like a more modern-ish style. It gives the whole thing a little more motion, which I like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Let's make these numbers dark. What's up, Robzilla in the house? Good to see you, Rob. He says, "Take my money." Just take it. It's awesome. Just take He's it. a lot coming from Rob's an awesome illustrator. Thank you, Rob. By the way. He's cool. All right, Chris should we try Olson? to do that explosion in here? We, should uh, we try to risk it? Let's do it. You gonna Why risk not? it? You gonna you go ahead and save your file. We also need to review uh, some of the challenge entries. Okay. So, but this might be a good uh, a good breaking point. 
before you uh, work on the explosion. Let's do that. Okay. So feel free, if you can see my screen, we'll just kind of dive into uh, the daily creative challenge, switching over right now. And just so everybody knows, here's the challenge all about bending pixels. Uh, there's a starter file, but the short of it, you can always watch the replay. So just go behance on it forward slash challenge forward slash Photoshop. And this is the one uh, that we're working on, which is bending pixels using liquify and other layer effects to make a person disappear. And here are the entries right down here. Current challenge, bam. Uh, there is just a couple, so this will this should go pretty quick, but there's lots of other ones that can be reviewed. Maji did a great job. Look at this. Like, this type needs work. We know that, but how smart is this? I to know. kind of make him look invisible, but then keep the glasses. Keep the glasses. The glasses is a pretty cool touch, though. Yeah. I love it. That's, just, that's a smart move. Yeah. Totally into it. So, Maji... Great job. Really cool. And then right up here, we have uh, Ebony's. Again, bending pixels kind of showed them how to use uh, filter effects. And it uh, looks like he is slowly like it, turning invisible. Uh, it's like midway through the process. Yeah. Uh, but it'd very be cool. It would be cool to make a gift out of these. Where you see the oh. person goes slowly disappears that would be that would be cool i like it but yeah this is fun we could always show people how to do that uh previously there again all based on books so we did a flower scheme there's one love in the time cholera i love this anytime somebody does this has the photo interacting with the text i think is so cool so this is yeah. super strong I don't know what your opinion about this pixelation right here is. Uh, I don't think it goes well with the style. Because mm -hmm. you have such a like cool, like almost vintage looking style with the flowers and all that. And yeah. the pixelation kind of breaks that. Yeah. But again, the text is pretty modern, so. Uh, yeah, maybe. I agree. It's it, it adds an element that just is not needed. I agree yeah. with you. Almost throwing too much at it. We did some Frankenstein stuff, which was really fun, right? Here's one. That's cool. Uh, again, another one, sort of cutting out. This was a lot of work cutting out all these flowers. Oh yeah. So Nadia, get great job. Yep. Here's some Invisible Man work. Somebody's just like Christy Fantastic is just trying to get some knocked out. <laughs> it's a race. So here was kind of like my version, one of them. That I just uploaded earlier, but anyway, plenty cool, we can man. review. We got lots of awesome submissions. Good job, Midge here as well. But I will move on, and I want to get back to you. Look at this lady with these lovely tattoos. Oh yeah, that's cool, man. It's got a lot of masking in there. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. So I'll let you do your thing. This has some really nice, rich colors in here. I like the color scheme yeah. happening here. Warms and cools, which totally works out. That's fun. Ron P. Here's another one. Again, people are, hopefully people are learning a lot. It was not easy to cut out all these flowers. So that's a great job right in here. Be Neto. Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Fun. I like Pet Cemetery. Yeah, it's a pretty wild movie. I haven't seen the. There was one that was recently made in the past five years that I have not seen. That I've I haven't seen that before. either. Yeah, I just like Stephen King in general. Yeah, I do too. Like any movie that's like has a fantastical element, I'm totally into. Yeah. Like this next level supernatural. But it looks like you're working again, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to your screen if you're game. Uh, uh, P. Fiority, by the way, great job. This is really cool. Good job. Love yes. it. That took a lot to like mask all of those. And then doing the butterfly, the butterfly behind the face. That's cool. Right? Yeah. yeah. I'd say just be aware of the size. Like this would be a massive butterfly. It can get from cute to scary depending on the size of the butterfly. <laughs> So, but really cool job. 
Right, I'm switching back to you. Let's do it. All right. You got it. So how much time do we have? It's time to start wrapping it up, huh? Well, you have about uh, uh, 20 minutes. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, we have time. Let's try to add that rocket uh, to the metal. I'm going to brighten this yellow in the background. That's perfect. And you all can see this, but this screen is in, on top of my screen, so I'm trying to make it small. That's why. Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. Um, I can see now. And I, I downloaded a couple images of rockets. This is one of them. And this is the other one. Love it. I don't know which one I like better. I think. That one, the first one's more contained. Yeah. Um, it's up to you, man. Except for the light. Yeah. And then this one. I like the idea of breaking the border of the guy. Oh, like taking that know. out of him? Yeah, like that That's trail cool. of smoke is kind of spilling over. I don't know. It might be a horrible idea. To the right? No. It could work. We can try to make it happen. If it doesn't work, then we'll, we'll say bye-bye to, okay. <laughs> to the idea. <laughs> um, all right, let's try this one. Try this one because the smoke goes out a little bit more. Then we can all, always bring more smoke and just throw it there or duplicate this one. Um, yeah, let's try this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste this in chat as a resource because there's the um, uh, NASA HQ photo, their Flickr page, basically. Mm -hmm. allows you to download a bunch of images. So just in case people. Uh, That's cool. So Will says you should isolate the clouds and then edit it as a smart object. Yeah, that could work. Whatever so, you say, man, I, I don't even know <laughs> what I'm doing right now. I'm like, I'm trying to get it done however possible. <laughs> no, into it. I just want to see you, see you work, man. I will be. I'm trying to get that little, little bead of sweat coming down your forehead. Like, oh, the pressure. No, pressure. I only have like 15 minutes and I got to put in this rocket. What is it, 15 minutes? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go back to my pen tool. <laughs> Probably going to have to obviously do some light work after this. Make that lighting look well. And this is going to be super small, so. I want to obsess over the details here. Uh, I think I'll just get rid of the blue altogether after. Just to make it fast. Also found uh, people are curious as to where to get those all those flowers. I got ooh, that's on a biodiversity um, Flickr account, and those are royalty free as well for those flowers. Since I had somebody ask.
There you go. Yep. Do you find yourself like working on a design like I do? Like you, you throw a lot at it and then you're like, ah, oh, I added way too much and this is lame. Yeah. And then you start editing it down and you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Like sometimes, you know, it depends on what it is. Mm -hmm. Especially it happens a lot when you overthink it, you know, when you want to make it look amazing, you do too much. And it's just like, oh no, it's not mm -hmm. working out now. But do I mean, you, it happens you, though. Yeah. Do you think for that smoke, should it, should you flip the image horizontally so the smoke is on the right? The other so way around? You, yeah. Try. You, don't have, you don't have to listen to me. But since he's looking that direction, you know, should that be that direction? I kind of like that as a balance better. So it is more balance? Yeah, but again, I know you're the artist. I'm just a hack. <laughs> That's not even mean. <laughs> a hack. <laughs> um, yeah, that might work. Let's, let's, let's rock with this and then... Uh, and then we'll see. what happens that's right carol magdal's used zero he has not labeled any of his layers life's too short to name layers you got work to do you can't be naming yeah, layers do you, do you rather see me making stuff or la naming layers yes. <laughs> do you want to see him name layers for about 45 minutes Consider yeah, the number of layers that he has voices. right now. <laughs> <laughs> and do it all. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. All the people that are out there that are like super uh, OCD. Or is that OCD? Is that what you, That'd be like an OCD type thing. Yeah. 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 I'm so sorry. I tried to though. I tried to name my layers in, in real life. Mm -hmm. But... Oh, what's going on here? I think naming layers is one of those things people always harp on. They're like, oh, na like that in practice doesn't get done as much as people. Yeah, in practice, on. I'm like, do you really do this though? But I'm like, you know, oh, if you're not if you're not sharing that file with anyone, you're not hurting anyone. Yeah, yeah exactly. Helena would watch a video of someone naming layers. <laughs> you uh, would really. A That's short, pretty crazy, though. That is pretty crazy. Let me try to... I want to show a shortcut for naming layers, by the way. I think we, we might have done too much here, Paul. Yeah? I don't know. Well, let's let's see. Let's do all the coloring and all that, and see where we land. Uh, and I also made the mistake of combining the layers. So I was trying to be done fast. No, you Never were do good. That. Never do that, guys. <laughs> I hope we didn't mess you up, and hopefully the file is saved. Um, concerning naming layers, real fast. I'll just kind of jump in here and show you guys this real fast because I thought this was like really helpful. Because you have a lot of layers you need to uh, rename. So if you just hit the tab key, it'll allow you to, and I switched to my screen. I'm right over here, click right in here. You gotta make sure this field is active. You'll say, you know, highlight, whatever. Tab key, next layer, tab key. So as long as the first one's highlighted, you can go down and name the quick brown fox or whatever. I could write a novel based on the layers right in here, but that's how you can name layers quickly. I'm glad we have you for day two. You did a lot today, man. Remember, Megdale started with like just a sketch. He went from blank Photoshop document to making everybody feel like really jealous of how good of work he does. So. Thanks Thank for you. making us feel so jealous of your mad skills. Stop it already. Oh, no. Uh, this needs a lot of work. So it's, it's like I'm trying in my mind, I'm trying to come up with a, 
with an easy solution so for the so that i can those, finish in time uh what i would i, I would probably i because the thing is, is that looks like almost too realistic and it's lost its graphic mm. look so i don't know like definitely like there's the color is one thing the other thing is the just the amount of detail on it Yeah, I'll, I'll make like, it. I'll, I'll give you the same effect in a second. Yeah, and maybe for the rocket, it is, and the cloud, and the and the smoke. It's um. I'd almost get rid of that color and use blend modes, and then you have a hint of something back there. I don't know something. I don't know. What do I know? I'll just be quiet and watch you. That's the last thing you need. Is no, thank you, you know, for helping 1500 me. Fifteen hundred or however many twelve. Uh, 1,213 art directors telling you what to do. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of, that's that's, a lot those of are a lot of art directors. One is enough. <laughs> One is enough. That's right. Ooh, I didn't, uh, that, yeah, like, I like what you're doing with the color already. Yeah, we got to try to make it look... Uh, let's do that... Um, that effect since we've done it and the whole thing do it on these two see what kind of effects that has on it yeah the, something else that we can do to it is like we do more black on the uh feeling very inspired savannah's feeling very inspired nice work my deal good you. work Yeah, Keith says only 44 thumbs up. Feel free to hit that thumbs up uh, if you're liking Magdale's work. Even if you don't, hit thumbs up anyways. Okay, why not? Yeah, be nice. Just be nice. Uh, how about that? Uh, we're, we're not, and to answer your question, Loic, we're not streaming from two separate locations. He's actually right here. He's right here next to me. Watch, I'm going to poke him in the ear. Uh, oh, that's fine. Boop. What's up, man? See, we're right here. High five. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck me indeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you for the thumbs up, Carol. We're all just sensitive designers and artists here. But also not so much. Because I think working in the commercial industry, you learn how to accept criticism, which is why I appreciate everybody's comments. Oh, yeah. Criticism is the best thing you can, you can take, man. Yep. When it's coming from the right people, obviously. Yeah. Otherwise, other otherwise they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> otherwise, if you don't like it. They don't know what they're talking about. I'm just kidding. I love feedback. I love I love feed getting feedback as long as it's positive. Just kidding. <laughs> We're really good at feedback as long as it's really positive and overly just flowery and uh, full of lies. Just kidding. I'm not loving these, man. I don't. I don't like how BC. Take got. it out. You would always take it out, because again, this is all part of the editing process. Bye -bye. I think we all agree. Boom. Done. Thumbs up, everybody. We're deleting. Are we it. good? Yeah. Oh, we have to get rid of that light too. Yeah. It? You see, it would be nice to have my layers and. Uh, that looks so good. It looks really good. I think it's missing am, it, like a little bit of something. This is just some smoke texture or something. Yeah, and I, f I feel like you're trying to make that clock, that bottom, that number six sticks out a lot since it's white. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll make but, it. I'll make it disappear a little bit. There was a way yeah. to make smoke in Photoshop. I forgot about it. I used to do it a lot when I was barely starting in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't remember how to do it anymore. Yeah, it would be. Using do you know how to do it? No. It'd be using uh using clouds yeah that was uh, it clouds which is under render clouds but it's something i would just i i think when uh, i think it's always back best to work from like a real image rather than yeah. trying to fabricate something in photoshop use the actual image and it's just going to make it look more realistic i agree so I downloaded this photo right now. I think I just want it to be on the bottom portion of it. Oh, 
Ooh, Rosie, that's like a that. that's that's a good call. Rosie mentions using a smoke brush. Yeah, if you have a smoke brush, that's also a great idea. Don't have Ooh. one here. <clears throat> I don't have one. I, I'm I'm usually like really bad at having cool brushes. Should probably do a better job at having brushes around that are like you know actually useful. I like this. Are you digging this, Paul? I am digging that. I love implied line. I like the uh, right side where the water is kind of trailing off and it breaks the border of the guy. I love yeah. the smoke. Gives it like a nice texture and gives it like more depth. Uh, makes it look like ethereal and like really kind of magical and s stuff. You know, like there maybe there was just a big explosion. Yeah. And then he's standing there, you know, so I'm into it. Like it just needs a final, I feel like balance up here of red or pink or whatever. Uh. Yeah, play with colors in there. Uh, Mag D, so Romero says Hulk says she's loving your work, loving your design. That's great. Lots man. of hugs and kisses. That's great. From they had a Hulk for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, friends huh yeah is All that right. friends or relatives yeah he's a friend he's a close friend nice yeah it's just reminding me of another friend from the gym ah sweet her name is hulk oh wow not 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 important <laughs> okay just, uh, when you say somebody's name is Hulk, you're just happy to say that it's followed by friend. Yeah. Somebody's called Hulk, you want them to be your friend. Yeah, yeah. Regardless. Regardless of what it is, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, I just want this hint of pink up here. So I do feel like it needs that balance, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I'm into it. since yeah. we're about to be done... You can always like the, at the end. That's something that I I do. Uh, I just come up here and do a color balance, and you can add more yellow to these, you know, or less. I like more yellow in this case for some reason. Yeah, I like it. You like using color balance. I used uh, that last time I was on this. We were on the stream together. I do. Yeah, I do love using it. So I think also you can do is so you can just drop an overlay on top of everything mm -hmm. and just go crazy with the, with with a crazy color like this. Oh wow! You know? Uh huh. Or like you know, yellow, or whatever. Yeah, that definitely. And that totally gives it a different look. Uh huh. Especially if you do, especially if you do it like you know around. It's like a comic book kind of feel, you know? Yeah, it does. I guess it pops a little bit more. It's less like magical and more vibrant. So it's Yeah, I'm also it's using like dissolve. disco colors. Oh, dissolve. Yeah. I'm using dissolve. That's why it looks so noisy right now. Uh, uh, yeah. We can just get rid of that or not, you know? Or like make it lower. Like this. It's definitely like magical but like super 80s at the same time I feel like yeah i really like the subtle grays and yeah i mean i think i think you're nailing it all um yeah yeah any any other suggestions last few comments just say whatever you want this guy josh says this guy deserves a big like thank you thank we you. appreciate that you do deserve a big like people like that thank ya. you Thank you for liking it. Into it. So yeah, awesome, man. This is looking great. I would say like, yeah, export this bad boy out. Like, you know, <laughs> next step is that like, as soon as you tweak it some more, you'll post it to Instagram. Yeah, get it out the door quick. Get it out the door. Yeah, you can see up here, there's not a lot of contrast up there. Mm. Yeah, you might, you might need something around these areas. But at the same time, I mean, it doesn't. If you have color, it doesn't because the color is bringing the, mm -hmm. the contrast itself. Well, very cool, man. We're down to our last minute. 
So I think this looks fantastic. Uh, follow Megdale. You could always hit the info tab. Uh, hopefully you're joining us on Behance. Uh, we'll get a sneak peek at this again tomorrow to kind of review it, but off to new things, right? Yeah, we'll do something new tomorrow. Maybe a little more conceptual and less crazy. Okay, well, we, we do love crazy, by the way, so feel free. The floor is yours, and we're just thankful Thank you're you. here, man. We Thank appreciate you. you. Everybody says you're awesome. Great job. We appreciate you. Uh, we're going to leave you with a schedule. Uh, Illustrated Daily Creative Challenge, branding, uh, some XD this afternoon. Uh, people mentioned Kyle Webster. Yeah, you can use some of his. He might have some cloud brushes, but you can draw along with him this afternoon. But, man, you're awesome. This is my favorite. You're like one of my favorite guests. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate so it. I appreciate all the love and the comments. And yeah, tomorrow yeah. for sure. Next, Sounds next day, good. same time. Same time, See same place. I'll leave you guys with the schedule. Thanks so much, everybody. All right. See you soon.